So, shall we begin? Yes. Yeah. So, Mr. Chai, if you could introduce the speaker. Yes. Um, it's really a very great pleasure and even an honor to introduce Vidya Rao. We've known each other for many years now. And I could do a standard introduction in which I would talk about what she does, which I will, but there is also another part of an introduction that I'd like to do. So first of all, Vidya Rao is a very well-known Thumri singer. She learned from uh, her guru, Naina Devi, on whom she's also written a book. Uh, she's also uh, has been an editor at Orient Black Swan for 30 years and now she continues as a consulting editor. And she's the recipient of many honors and awards uh, which uh, have allowed her to explore the worlds that she wants to explore. But the great thing about her way of talking to us is that she's, she, we have to remember that she's a Thumri singer to whom the word and the sound and the entire bodily presence are equally important. I remember first listening to her at SEPT many years ago, where she held us spellbound with the extremely subtle yet deep expression of the thoughts that she had. So that it is absolutely fitting for this alter ego studio that she be the first speaker in the series of talks that we are going to have. We would like to listen to her speaking. We will also see her speaking. We will feel her presence. And perhaps we might even hear the music of that voice. A voice which has been looking at the sounds of the city in recent times. And she is someone who knows Delhi in ways that many of us don't know. So it is with great uh, pleasure that we invite Vidya Rao to start her talk. Thank you, Professor Chaya, for uh, an introduction that I now have to live up to. Um, thank you also for your many years of friendship and for how much I have learned from you. And thank you, all of you. I can see some of your faces and I can see some, not see some, but thank you for inviting me. Thank you for hopefully uh, we will take this, I don't know, friendship or whatever further, hopefully. Okay, so um, let me let me start by saying that you know every moment that comes to us it comes very, uh, very mixed so uh, we lived through not just five months i think you know uh, a very long time of quite dreadful things but certainly the last five months have been very strange very complex very um, uh, we, we also don't know what's going to happen next. So we're living, we're living actually with a lot of uncertainty, a lot of chaos, but it's also giving us the opportunity to learn to live with, to learn to, to learn to understand that actually this is really, first of all, the, the state of things. I mean, it, it's not just now. The universe has always been chaotic. It's always been uncertain. Our lives have always been uncertain. We just have tried to pretend 
and in trying to pretend, I think we put things in place, we imposed ourselves on the environment, we imposed ourselves on other people, and we have created great harm. So um, there is an opportunity here, a very tiny little opportunity, and maybe it's a very, very small thing, but yeah, we can think, and it seems to me that this, uh, this set of uh, lectures and discussions at SEP is one of those little ways in which we can begin to think about these things and, and try and see how can we live differently? How can we live with, with, uh, with honesty and truth and compassion and kindness? And also with the uh, joyous acceptance actually of, of uncertainty. Uh, okay. Now, I, uh, when uh, Professor Chaya asked me uh, to speak here, um, uh, I said that actually I want to speak about how a city sounds and what can I understand from that? What is it telling me? And I want to go back to a day many, many years ago when my uh, friend, oh, I'm so sorry. All right. <laughs> okay. Can you hear me better now? Is this better? Yeah, okay, great. All right, sorry. Yeah, so uh, I'd like to go back to a day when um, I was talking with a friend of mine, um, Professor Fabia Sachi, who teaches uh, uh, sociology at Jamia. And uh, he had been doing some work um, uh, on, the, uh, on the architecture, actually. He's a sociologist, but he was looking at the architecture and the and the space of the uh, Harmandir Sahib in uh, Amritsar. And he said something which, in a sense, we all know, but maybe we don't quite register it and think about it. He said, you know, it's quite wonderful. You hear it before you see it. And I said, of course, you hear it before you see it. That is the sound of Amritsar. That is the sound of that part of Amritsar. It would have been the sound, perhaps, of all of Amritsar when it was a smaller space and when there was less other kinds of sound. And uh, and I'm, and so I'm grateful to that tiny fragment of a conversation with uh, Sabi that has uh, that has pushed me to try and begin to think. And I'm really going to only be raising questions. Okay, I'm just going to be I'm just going to be thinking through some things, asking some questions, and uh, I don't know. Hopefully, maybe at some point I'll be able to write something about it. So um, I start with this with this thing about Harman Desai. I also want to ask the question, you know, are we as a civilization or a whatever, I mean, all of us, the whole world, um, do we tend to be more visual than any other sense? You know, certainly we uh, do not have a very, uh, very keen sense of smell, not like animals anymore. We do not have the kind of very keen, we don't also have a very keen sense of uh, vision. I mean, animals are much better than us, but, but, but but think about this a little, you know, it seems to me that sound, smell, touch, taste, these are, they exist, they are there, and we certainly know the world through them. But it, it's probably the visual that uh, is, is, uh, is kind of right on top there, if there's a hierarchy of these uh, things. And, and so uh, the question is really, can we know a space? Through its, through its smell, and we do know that places have specific smells. Houses have smells. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, I mean, when I say smell, I don't mean necessarily bad or good or anything. They they have a particular, uh, the particular you know way in which they they enter you through your nose. And certainly, there are spaces and things that uh, you know they have a sound. You know it. Um, I think there are also sounds that we can't hear, but we probably are aware of because we are absorbing them. So, uh, so I think this is something that I'm trying to ask myself. You know, how do I understand the space through sound? How do I how do I understand what that sound is telling me about this space and about the people who inhabit this space? And also, if that sound changes for some reason, then what is it telling me about the changes that are taking place in that space? And in the minds of those people, and in the in the in the in that society or in that group of people, you know? uh, I think we're all familiar. You know, let me just start with a very simple and 
very ordinary thing. I think we're all familiar with when the lockdown happened and then for a while there was no traffic, there were no people on the streets, there, were, there was nothing happening. A whole lot of other sounds suddenly, you know, our, our, our spaces, our cities, our bastis, whatever, they, they just became a different oral universe. I mean, I live in Meroli, which is very, uh, there are a lot of trees. It, it has a green, it has a green belt, which is a protected green belt. Uh, of course, there is a, there is a, there is a village and because it's in the Laldora area, there's unlimited building happening and things. So Meroli is not what it was when I moved here 23 years ago, but still it is very green. And I know there are birds because they actually come into my balcony, but over the sound of traffic, I could not always hear. And I could not hear the birds that were in the forest. And suddenly in lockdown, the, the, the world was full of bird song. I mean, I could hear so many birds. I could hear, I could hear so much very fine sound. You know? uh, the other thing that, that I could hear, and I'm sure you've all experienced this, was was the vendors, you know, I mean, lockdown, lockdown cheek hai, but you know, in this country, everybody is not able to stay home. They have to work. So God bless the sabjiwala and the phalwala and whatever, they were all coming and they were all calling out and it, and, and uh, it was, it was like my childhood, you know, I could hear these sounds again and, and, uh, and I think we've all experienced that. Uh, so yes, this, this is a change in the soundscape and we know why it was. It was because the traffic vanished, it was because people vanished, it was because, it was because nobody was walking around with the whatever, you know, in, in cars with music blaring, and sitting in cars with music blaring. But um, I think what, what I want to try and ask is how do we understand this? How do we, how do we see what it means? For for the uh, for the group for the society for people what is it saying about uh, uh, about uh, what people want to do what people hope to do what might happen yes and I again want to go back to an early memory of my childhood when I actually I grew up in Hyderabad and I would wake up to the sound of azan and to me that sound has always been the sound of of wake up in the morning. I mean, it was it was uh, it was it was so lovely. It was peaceful, and the maza at that time was very surilla. He was really he really uh, you know called the aza very beautiful. It was a beautiful beautiful sound. <laughs> Over the years, I find that is not so. You know, I mean, it still it still wakes me in the morning, but that beauty of the sound you know just and again I, I I ask myself what what is this saying you know why why has the, and and you it seemed to me that wherever wherever I went whatever wherever at whatever time I heard the other it was surila when I was a child it's it's not now uh, I say this with, uh, you know, please forgive me, I don't want to upset anyone. I, I'm just saying this as, you know, what I hear, what a singer hears, and, and a question to ask myself, why is that? You know, it can't be that that, that people cannot be Surila, you know, people are. So is it, a, is it that there's no need seen anymore to pay attention to that part of it? Is that is that what it is? What is it? I mean, I, I think we've all been all been assaulted by not just this thing, but you know, from various spaces, uh, extremely besura sound. And this is again, you know, a question I have to ask: What is it? Has the sensitivity to sur completely vanished, or is there a lack of interest in that? It, so what is it? I think the other thing that ha has happened recently for me is when I moved into Meroli, uh, this area has a lot of uh, 
projects. So there's a lot of, you know, so, and, the, and obviously the clocks are not synchronized. So uh, you would hear it just slightly, slightly, you know, slight, this slight time lag, but you would hear many. And it was, uh, it was, it was a morning song. That was my morning. I cannot now hear, even now, even now when it's quiet, I cannot now hear the uh, the, uh, the Azar from far away places. Even the, even the one which is near my house, it seems to have toned down the mic, the loudspeaker. And again, I have to ask myself, why is that? And I will return to that later. Okay, I just want to, I just want to place that uh, before you. Know? Uh, so, one of the things that it, I think we all know is that sound is sound is something that uh, even if I am myself speaking or singing or whatever or banging two plates together or whatever, the sound will carry further than my body. We know that, isn't it? Yeah. Now, if I amplify that sound, then it carries much, much, much further than my body. Now, is this, is this need nowadays that we have, as we see increasingly, to amplify sound, what is it saying? Is it, what is it? Why do people amplify so much? Why do they do it? I think we've all heard, we've all heard this. You know, somebody's party is happening and you have to be a uh, sort of unhappy participant in your own house in that. Some, something, you know, some festival is happening and you hear the sound. The, the sound is extending all over. What does it mean? Why, what does it mean? What is it? And is it a way of, of ourselves to claim space, to extend our space in some fashion, almost even aggrandize the space? Are we doing that? I, I, I'm asking this question, what is it? Why this huge speaker? What is it about? Okay. Uh, I think when uh, Dr. Chaya spoke with me, or maybe it was a minute, uh, he had uh, mentioned a talk that I'd done earlier at CERC, and he said, could I, could I say something about that? And uh, so I am going to move to that, and it's a very different kind of world that I'm going to talk about. You see, um, as a Hindi singer, and in those days, this was like in the 80s, uh, in the mid and late 80s, I, I realized that uh, you know, I, I could not really understand Thumri unless I also understood a little bit of the lives of the women who had traditionally sung Thumri. And fortunately for me, um, they were still alive, some of them. So, uh, so I started making these journeys into the, into what is the red light area. Now in Delhi, this, what we call the red light area now was, was the, uh, was a, was a chalk and it was actually first in an area called Chauri Bazaar, uh, which has now become the paper market. Um, I remember Nana Ji, my guru, telling me that uh, in, 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 the, in the, those early days, you know, uh, before independence, just, just around the time after independence, if you, if you went to Chauri Bazaar in the evening, um, and you know how the Chauri Bazaar is uh, in the old city, it's uh, quite close to the Jana Masjid, so it's a very busy area. So if you went there in the evening, there would be all these huge cars, you know, this Raja ke, this Nanad ke, you know, all those number plates, and they would all be there because the, uh, the mehfil would be happening in the Kocha. Now, I, uh, I was not born at the, at the time that, uh, uh, that uh, of that of those methods, but I was certainly around when the the court has were shifted from Chauri Bazaar to a place called GB Road, and I forget now the name, the full name. Of it. It's it's um, it's just beyond um, 
Kuzman Gate area and then this is next next railway station, the New Delhi railway station. Uh, and uh, it's it's quite a busy area again because a lot of uh, um, what do they call truck people, you know, transporters and that kind of uh, shops. And there's a lot of also uh, sanitary wear shops, or at least in those days, in the early eight, in the 80s when I went there. And uh, anyway, I, um, I took myself off to this area because I said I have to try and meet some of these people. I have to understand how they sang. And I wanted to meet the old people. I also met some young women. Uh, and how did how, what what did they feel about how did they how did they see themselves in this other situation where they were now not considered artists they were considered only sex workers and they were old so they were not even able to sing not that much um, and and what had what what was it about so my my questions were different they were not about sound per se but I'm thinking now about so I met this woman whom I call Bhatab, and uh, we became kind of friends. And in the manner of all uh, all senior singers, I mean, she took one look at me and she said, Are tu thundi kya re? Bahar, kya hai? So I sort of looked at her little startled and she said, Ek baan nahin, do baan nahin, das baar, bees baar, banna kya So anyway, whatever. So we became good friends of a sort because she was always very senior and I was always extremely polite to her and um, and she did sing and of course her voice was failing she was an, she was very old at the time she was probably in her mid 70s or 80s or something but she did sing and uh, and she had this gaiki and she had that uh, that tradition which the old Tumi singers have of bhav batake gana yani uh, with gestures and with with uh, how how you know facial expression, which uh, is now not there. A few people uh, do it, of course, but uh, it's it's basically not there. Uh, uh, so uh, so this was a wonderful experience for me to actually see this happening. Um, it was also a kind. You know, there were all kinds of other experiences, like the sound of the of the of the uh, of uh, this street uh, during the day, which was completely different. You know, there were there were these uh, shopkeepers and people buying things and whatever. And then um, I once got a bit delayed, so I came out. It was quite evening. There was the sun was sun had already set. The street lights had come on. It was a different sound. The the you know, at the street level, everything was shuttered. Everything was closed. But from above, you know, the lights began to come on and you could hear the sounds of instruments being tuned. You could sound, you could hear things happening. So it was a completely different world. Yeah. Um, so soon after I met her, a couple of months after I met her, um, Mahatabai, um, her, um, she had a son. And her son um, found a, a job in the city. And his job permitted him to avail of a small uh, accommodation. So she moved, uh, and she was by now very old, you know. So she moved with her son to this place. It was in, it was behind Bogal. So it was a kind of very uh, lower middle class, if you will forgive my making things like that. But is uh, ki jagethi. And uh, she was she was in this space, and I went to in this flat, a small flat, and there were neighbors and everything. I went to visit her there, and the first thing she said to me was, uh, "Can you sing where you live? Aap kya rehte ho? Aap ga sakte ho?" I said, "Ha ha." She said, "Ha many ga?" And immediately, uh, of course, I understood that the sound of her singing would be not appropriate in this space because. The people she was sharing the space with would immediately see it as this is a kothe wali. Yeah, and she's not respectable and we don't want her here. Uh, so actually, um, I it was interesting for me because you know I had kind of a three-way discussions with her. I would go to where she was living and we would have conversations. 
she would show me photographs. She would, uh, you know, she would, uh, we would, we would talk a lot. I would make chai for her, whatever. And then sometimes she would come to my house. And I remember one time it was winter. She came all wrapped up in a shawl, you know, like you could barely see her face. And then she came and she pulled off the shawl and she said, uh, and she had everything, you know, like nice big earrings and yay and go and she was all dressed up and she had lipstick and everything. She had come to sing. And she said, I 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 said, Anyway, so she came and then she sang there and then she would come to Menaji's house also and then there would be more uh, Ghana there and then she would actually teach over there. So it was, uh, there was this wonderful interaction, but it was interesting that each space would be kind of different. You know, at, at, in, with me, because I was younger, because I was clearly a student and because she could, uh, you know, she could sort of a little bit, you know, let it come as boss me around. She she did. I mean, she did exactly what she liked. She told me what to do. She said this. In Nenaji's house, it was different, you know. Here she was in the presence of this doyan of Sunni uh, Gaiki and a woman who also, uh, because of who she was and so on, was uh, was uh, was present in that in that uh, space in in the modern in the modern space of uh, of uh, classical music. The other, the other, uh, very sad thing about uh, about Mahata Bai was that uh, she couldn't sing, but she wanted so much to continue to be in touch with that world that she would, uh, she would, um, she got herself work at All India Radio to play tantra. So she would go occasionally, and you know, I mean, I don't know, they would pay her some small amount. It would also help her. And she would uh, she would play tanpura for other singers, and it always used to think you know I always would think that I I hope it doesn't ever happen that I have to sing and you know she has to play for me because I think it's so inappropriate you know you, you because it's not correct that an older person a more senior person a more knowledgeable person should sit behind you and play tanpura anyway. So, uh, so for me, the 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 the, the uh, imagining of her playing the tantra also created a kind of uh, a kind of world. You know, who, who is she playing for? What is it? What does she feel at that point? You know, uh, I hope she doesn't have to ever play for me. I mean, I will have to refuse. And then on the other hand, if I refuse, then what happens to the money she's going to earn? All those kind of things. Now, uh, somewhere along the line, uh, uh, I think I'm also coming to the end of my times and also anyway, the end of what I have to say. Somewhere, very, uh, you know, again, uh, somewhere along this uh, time, uh, she, I think just either she was really feeling very old, she said, I can't handle this anymore, I don't want to live here anymore. And I remember the last time I met her, she was lying down on the floor because it was very hot. And she totally shut all the doors and windows. You know, and, and, uh, and she was lying down on the floor. She was just wearing a manyan and it was very, really, very hot. And she, she said, get me some water. So I did. And then she said, better. And she began to sing. And uh, you know, her voice had completely gone by then. It was so moving. It was so moving. Uh, but but you know that bhav was still there in her voice. And then she said to me, Abbas, Abhayani, I said to her, I'm going to the Dargah. And she went to uh, Bareli Sharif. Bareli Sharif is a Dargah where a lot of musicians actually uh, married her. And she was a musician. So um, she went away. She said, I'm going now. And she went away and very soon after that she passed. And I have to ask myself, in the time we had mobile phones, we didn't have email, we didn't have all these things whereby I might have got in touch with her. 
I just heard that you know she she came and two weeks three weeks later she passed away. Um, but I I ask myself now you know when she went to the darga did she sing did she sing there and if she sang you know because her her repertoire was thumri dadra ghazal and her repertoire was inflected in the way that a tawaf sings you know it was a siddhartic repertoire and that was what was beautiful about it. When she went to the darga, and if she sang, did she inflect it differently? Was it heard differently? Was it felt and experienced differently? I cannot believe that she did not sing. I believe that she would have. I, I believe that 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 would have been one of the reasons she went there. And and again, I have to ask you know, how how these spaces, the space of Jolly Bazaar, where you know, connoisseurs of music perhaps came to listen. The space of GB Road, the red light area where it was a very different it's a very different world. I mean, you know, there may be a bit of singing and dancing, but I've seen that. It's a lot of, you know, copy of film things. The the space of her house, of her home near Bogal, where she could not sing, where she had to stay silent. The, the space of my house, where she sang in a particular way and dealt with music, you know, her, her way of being a musician was a different kind of way. The way of the space of Nenaji's house, which is again a very different space, the space of all India radio, which again gave her a different kind of sound and being. And then finally, the space of the Darga. You know, what kind of selves came together? What kind of sound did she, what kind of sound came? What kind of sound was that singing? And how was that sound heard by those who heard it? You know, so these are questions I have to ask myself. I I had thought that I do I have time to say one more thing. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yes, one yes. more thing. Yeah, sure, yes, please. Sure, sure. One, please. Okay, one please. more. It's it's kind of a slight aside, but you know, um, Today, I think Muharram starts. And um, for about 20 years, by a sort of strange and wonderful fortuitous circumstance, I have uh, found myself being invited to uh, the women's majlis of, uh, of uh, during Muharram for 10 days, and sometimes beyond also during the 40 days, to actually recite uh, those khani. So I've been doing that, and I'm I'm uh, really quite uh, you know it's something that I I do uh, it's something that I'm very interested in. I'm asking questions about it. I'm trying to write about it. Ah, uh, one of the again you know my whole interaction with that uh, situation uh, of the women's majlis. You see, as a as a student of music, I encountered the I encountered uh, the uh, Muharram as uh, this period of ostensible non-singing because uh, my one of my mentors, I should call him a guru really, Daim Ali Khadri, a wonderful tabla nawaz, who actually, you know, told me that my house come to my house, I will tell you how to hold my bowl, I will tell you. And he really taught me a lot. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful man. I love him dearly. And of course, he's also no more. But uh, of course, during Muharram, he, would, he wouldn't tell me don't come. He would say, come to me. But we ask me hoga because during this time we don't, uh, you know, gana bajana nahi hota hai. But uh, the, you know, all the, all the alarm and everything would be there and he would make me sit there and then, you know, his relatives and he, I didn't at that time hear the women's budget. So, you know, a, a woman singer in, in those days was of Thumri. You're a kind of strange, ungendered person and you tend to live in the men's world. But I did, of course, meet his wife and spend time with the family and all that, but that was a different story. But uh, Hasab would uh, actually say, Tum ho. You know, So I was there, one woman, amid all these uh, men who would be reciting the uh, Soz Khan. And uh, I was amazed because you, if, you know, for those of you who have heard Soz Khan in the way that the Gharanidhar uh, Ustad's recite, it's very, very complex. So it's actually the Riyaz. We say we don't Riyaz, we don't sing, we don't sing, we don't sing, we don't sing. We say that you know, literally a human tantura, and they uh, 
Ustad, the, the senior Ustad, they, uh, they recite, Gana nahi hota hai, padte hai. they recite against this oral uh, Tanpura, you know, this, uh, this vocal Tanpura, this vocal Tanpura. And I was fascinated by this, you know, this singing but not singing. Complexity of singing but it's not singing. Uh, and it, but it was much later when I entered the women's majlis that uh, that for me also other questions. It's a much simpler gaiti because the women are not trained musicians largely. Uh, okay, that's a whole another topic, and hopefully we can do it sometime. How did the courtesans, uh, you know, recite uh, Soskhani? That's another thing. So again, this kind of in between space of being being female but yet inhabiting, in some senses, a male world. Okay. But wo abhi thodi der ke liye rehne do. Uh, so uh, you know they're largely folk dhun and so on, but uh, but very beautiful. And to me, suddenly what was coming from this was a well, a very feminine discourse on what war, war and violence does. You know, uh, it's really a it's it's really the pathos of this, and I. I experienced that and I experienced it very deeply and in a sense that is really why I do it because you know, there's, there's one kind of uh, saying that we don't want war, we don't want violence. There's another kind which says I mourn all those deaths. So uh, uh, for me also again, you know, uh, this, this the way in which different spaces the uh, the the uh, the the sense of what's happening in Muharram, the rituals around Muharram, there are different spaces and they have different sounds. You know, there, there, is the, there is the Julus that goes past. Normally, at least in Delhi and Hyderabad, where I grew up, I have not seen women in that. But when I was in Hyderabad as a child, I remember people used to stand with water and they were people of all faiths. And today I think about that and I think how beautiful it is to, to, to give water to these uh, carriers of the Tazial is to give water to the thirsty, to the suffering at all times. Yes, of course, to the to the suffering of, of Karbala. But Karbala is always happening. It's happening now. What is this water? What is the sound of those cries? What is the sound of those women's cries? What, what does it mean? What space is it creating? That space is here and now. That space is now. That happened of 1,500 years ago. It's here. And it is here in what we see around us. And, and I don't know, if there is time, then always you can just play a little of that uh, Susan. जब कटा जहरा का चमन दश्त बला शामिल हुआ प्यासों का लहू तो मैं यही आ, मैं यही रुकना चाहूंगी 
I mean, there's so much to think about. I am I'm, I'm only asking some questions. I need to think more about this and I'd be so happy if, uh, I don't know, you can think through these things with me and help me to think. Any questions? Uh, sorry, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, I was wondering uh, because we have a lot of young people in our attendees today, and uh, there are some also from outside of India. If you could just elaborate a little bit about the Tumri form and what it means, and I've heard uh, that description from you earlier, and it's absolutely beautiful. Okay, so um, this is a form that uh, till very recently, I and mean, it was not even considered classical. Even now, people call it semi-classical. I'm not very sure what that means. Uh, I anyway have problems with these categories, classical folk and all that, but we'll just use it. Huh? So it's a form of art music, let's say. It's a form of concert music. It's a form of performed music for, for which there's a clear performer and a clear audience. But uh, it's different from uh, some of the other forms of uh, what we might call art music or classical music, because it, whereas in forms like Hayal, the, uh, the development of the music is, is in accordance with the grammar of the rag. Now, it, if you are a vocal musician, if you are a singer, then of course you will be singing words also. Yes? So the words are not unimportant. They are not unimportant. They, they are very central. But, and also any musician will tell you that the bandish, the composition, which is the word, the particular uh, way in which the words fall into that rag pattern. Yeah, are held together in the notes of that rag and also the rhythmic structure of that. Okay? The bandish bahut ahem hoti hai. It's the most important thing actually. And uh, when I was young, I, you know, many teachers and did not even tell you the ascending and descending notes of the scale. They did not even tell you the name of the rag. They just taught you many, 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 many bandishes in that rag so that it, you would just by form, you know, you just absorb the sense of that rag and you know that this is this is the way the rag moves. This is how it is. This, these are the notes of that rag. More than notes, this is the way the note is uttered in this rag. You know, how does it come? Where does it fall from? Does it move upwards? Does it, you know, does it have a kind of, does it have a touch of another rag, of another note? And so on. So, but the words do not acquire the kind of centrality and uh, significance that they do in a form like Thumri. Uh, in Thumri, poetry and music and of course Laikari, I mean, you know, I am so indebted to Daimali Khadri Tabla Nawaz for actually, uh, you know, sort of making, sensitizing me to the way in which bhav is created even in the ways in which you, you uh, approach the sound. Yeah, or the way in which you play with the rhythm, the ways in which the word falls on the rhythm or doesn't fall on the rhythm. He taught me that and he was wonderful. I mean, I'm not, whatever, I mean, I, I'm not worthy of that, but still. So, is there a thundi ki bandishin hoti hai? Thundi bandishas are like this. And it's not just the poetry, it's the whole cultural meaning behind each word of that poetry. So, if I say tree, if there is a word, you know, I mean, first of all, in Tumri, nobody will ever say tree. They will not say, um, yeah, they will actually. They will say biracho or whatever. But very often the tree is named. You know, semal, tesu, neem, whatever. There's, 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 a, there's, a, there's a loving, uh, a detailed looking, you know. There's, there's a fullness of that. Uh, 
there is a full there is a full recognizing of this the selfness the the, the illness and self of the tree yeah or whatever of that meal or that people or whatever it is uh, but there are cultural meanings to tree yeah so if i say people how many meanings there are i mean you know as as children we have heard all kinds of stories straight from mahate you know there are bhut in that tree there are there are all kinds of atmas in the people tree or there is the upside down tree which looks like a people which is the wish wish fulfilling tree there is the tree of uh, there is the tree of life there you know there, it's it, it, there's so many things so tree is not just tree it 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 expands then tree is also tree is also the life of that tree the, you know when what time of that tree i mean is it is it in spring is it in, is it in patjhad is it in the rainy season when each each moment that tree is different and living yeah each moment and who lives on that tree what's happening there so there is there is a there is a there is a there is a full entering at least for me there's a full entering of the being of of tree or river or or uh, you know i mean if i speak uh, or sari you know if i say okay mori sari or something you know bhijai mori sari ye sari kyu sometimes they say jama sometimes they say choliya sometimes they say angriya ye sari kyu kahenge and we uh, it's not just this you know it's not just this sari so that's also very beautiful and i love it and you know for me the moment i said sari i also remember all my weaver friends in banaras in lucknow in here and there i mean you know the conversations i've had with them the chai i've had with them and i hope that somehow i'm able to bring that also into the singing of that of that of that thing you know bhi jani the sari the kaun si sari hai but there's also that sari is also kadri's chadar why is it it is infinite it is it is what we what we would think of as the self which is so vast that it can encompass it can be tree also it can be everything and that does not mean a kind of megalomania of this understanding it is just this vastness where the, the boundary of one's self dissolves and there is no self and there is no other for me thumri gives me this and people say thumri it's a romantic form it's, it's an erotic form even and there are bandishes which are very body because it was performed for patronage it was performed for uh, for receiving patronage and it was performed for the entertainment of an elite male audience so uh, i i it's very difficult for me sorry to separate my own my own understanding of thumri and my my love for thumri from saying what it is yeah okay so it is this in in the uh, you know people have interpreted ke you know when they say chhad de baiya or something like that you know ke ka hai piya kar to bara jori or something actually you're saying it to krishna yeah maybe i'm also saying it to krishna i mean he's also part of my universe hmm? but then remember that there are khayal bandish as well where there is a conflating of the image of krishna and somebody called a turak langar turak turak langar turak jina chhu chhu mori gagariya bhari abadi bugari ye bhijnari nirakh nirakh sab hat hat de tu mohe gari langar turak na jina chhu jina chhu chhu ye ye turak this is what krishna does but you know saying turak ha Lovely conflict. We talk about self and other. Okay, so uh, so this this possibility for the bandish to constantly expand to, you know, uh, for 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 the self to dissolve for for you to be able to because you are a bowl banana. We use the technique of bowl banana. And in bowl banana, it is bowl. The bowl means the word. You create words. Ah, but bowl. See, there are there are many words for word in Hindi. Ah, you can say bowl, you can say shabd, you can say many things. Shabd is Sanskritic. It's polite. Bowl is colloquial. It's lovely, and it's also active because it's also verb. It's also noun. 
तबला के बोल होते हैं बंदिश के बोल होते हैं इट्स नाउन या बट बोल रे से समथिंग it's also a verb it's active it's doing it's it's moving it's being it's not just a thing i love that about tune i love it yeah and i love the way in which yes of course you can say this is atma parmatma but it is much 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 more than that it is much more than that it is not it is it is it is about recognizing that we are who we are we are we are and this very small tiny very limited very flawed animal really you know, being that's not going to live very long i just have a limited life span but in the singing and then because in the singing at any time it is possible because the singing is a riyaz only for life yeah i mean it's not a riyaz to get one to the same it's a riyaz for life because the singing gives me this riyaz of of dissolving of, of accepting and becoming other also of 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 dissolving the difference between self and other to me that is the true spirituality that is the true spirituality and maybe that is the true social socialness of it also i mean, i I, you know, i don't like to make distinctions between the spiritual and the ordinary it's all here Ah, uh, does that explain about Thundi, or did I go off on a tangent? That was beautiful. That was beautiful. I think uh, you know you are making everyone emotional here, and I think in in some sense we we all sense that uh, that otherness or that dissolving that you are talking about, whether it's the uh, the love for the sound of the elder or the respected or the vendors on the street or the tree or the birds. I think it's. it's uh there is a certain aspect which is which is really um at the base of uh, this understanding of cities as well as sounds in the city and i think that came across really beautifully thank you so much thank you i think there are one or two questions which uh, some of the participants have asked um the first one naina ji i mean sorry <laughs> vidya ji is um it's asks i would like to ask if there were such discussions like city and space during your learning or riyaz with gurus and how the discussions catalyzed the learning whether there were discussions about city and space uh no not discussions of this kind not discussions of this kind but i think um, i think that certainly when my uh, you know okay let me just say something you know i once went with naina ji to banaras she had a performance there and i went with her uh, for that performance and um, you know we stayed for a couple of days because obviously she knew many people there and you know performance khatam ho gaya fir hum log khub ghume the eight lots you know you have not lived unless you have eaten jalebi on the ghat and so on and so forth anyway or uh, Uh, and then she used to teach me in the morning. She said, "Pehle riyaz karenge, thoda sikhenge, fir iske niklenge." Uh, so uh, she was teaching me something, and she said, uh, "And then she said, 'You know, I'm so, I'm so happy. Ye Rasulan Bai ki cheez hai, aur Banaras mein hum uh, isko gaane. So Rasul Rasulan Bai spent a lot, lot of time in Banaras. Ye Banaras ka ang hai, aur Banaras mein baish ke hum gaane." So, uh, so yeah, sh- we did not discuss cities, but you know, now you asked me that question, and I'm thinking, and yes, there is something. There is an emotional uh, for for Nena Ji. I think what what there was was there was an emotional sense that that her thundi, her her gaiki of thundi, it was embedded within Banaras, and that it was the most precious thing for her to be able to 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 uh, give me talim. in rasulan bai's bandish in banaras you know there, there was something it it took it out of the it 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 uh, uh, okay i think the word i'm looking for is numinosity mm-hmm. uh, you use that word you know it takes it to another uh, another level of, uh, something happens to it. It, it 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 is illumined in different ways uh, and what is it it's nothing 
कि बनारस के एक छोटे मोटे होटल में बैठ के यू नो सिटिंग ऑन क्रीकी बेड्स शी टॉट मी वन बंदिश हाँ सो इट्स इट्स वेरी ऑर्डिनरी इट्स रियली वेरी वेरी ऑर्डिनरी बट बट देर वॉज समथिंग दट फॉर हर एंड फॉर मी ऑल्सो यू नो आई नो आई फेल्ट very very happy at that moment you know that i felt this connection with with a with a genealogy with a with a with a whole uh, uh, you know whole uh, tradition a whole parampara uh, i felt a very small very inadequate yes but a part of it you know to be able to just be there and and just even a, not even a drop but just to be able to even breathe in that presence uh so so yes that kind of sense there were other there were other things you know um i'm sorry do i talk much too long is happening no no But about space you know and i've written about this in the book you know there was a time when i was learning with nana ji and going through a really difficult time i had to find a place to stay and i was finding it really difficult i'm a single parent and delhi is, was not even though now is not very kind to young single parents so um uh, it's funny they difficult to find a place to stay and and this sense of you know ghar nahi hai you know i don't know what i'll do and i i sort of nana ji said don't worry come and stay here you know that kind of thing so that was kind of okay it's all right and and then uh uh you know it was barsat <clears throat> barsat ke din the aur khub barsat ho rahi thi and i had gone for my uh, talim to her house and you know she uh, she said ye बहुत पुरानी बंदिश है कोई गाता नहीं है हाफिज अली खान साहब ने मुझे बताई तो वो छुमरी थी तो और बरसात की छुमरी थी वैसे सैया बरखा में लेने आए इन द इन द सीजन ऑफ रेन्स माय हस्बैंड माय बिलवेड केम टू टेक मी अवे गोना गोना होता था दे वुड टेक अवे द गर्ल हु वाज मैरिड अर्लियर बट दे वुड टेक हर अवे बिकॉज़ शी इज नाउ ग्रो तो सैया बरखा में लेने आए हां और उसका अंतरा बाबुल से कहती झूला डलाती एरी अब झूला झूलने ना पाई के अरे इफ दिस वाज एन अर्लियर टाइम आई मीन दैट्स इन ब्रैकेट हां इन स्क्वायर ब्रैकेट इट्स नॉट पार्ट ऑफ द सॉन्ग आई वुड टेल माय फादर मेक अ स्विंग फॉर मी सो दैट आई कैन प्ले ऑन द स्विंग या आई एरी सखी एरी एरी इज सखी माय माय फ्रेंड माय फ्रेंड ऑफ माय चाइल्डहुड never more will i be able to play on the swing no, i'm going now i'm going to my husband's house it's another life yeah and then and then there was this and immediately because barsat thi kajri batai mujhe and it's a very famous kajri bahut log gaate hain ke tarasal jiara hamar nehar mein nehar mein mere pita ji ke ghar mein in my father's house my heart is in such torment it, it cannot rest in peace because i want to go baba hat keen ha gavanwa na din ha my father is so stubborn he is not sending me to my husband house husband house and beat jail le barkha baba me harma and i thought of this i said and okay you know uh, to whoever asked that question maybe it's not about space maybe it's not about city but it also is about space about other kinds of space but to me i suddenly and also because in the sense it really it really went to me i said so where is my home i don't have a home i'm 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 looking for home and but then you know it was the most beautiful experience for me because i thought about this i said you know for women in patriarchal societies i mean my situation is different i'm just looking for a place to rent but for women in patriarchal societies it's existentially there is no home You know, the moment you're born, if you're a girl, ke paradhan kya hai? You're married. You're never fully part of that house. You can be thrown out at a moment's notice or burnt or whatever happens to women. Yeah. Where is a woman's home? And if we if if we think as Jung would that the soul, the in the the self is is feminine, then where is our home? You know, I mean, anybody's home. and and to me this wondrous realization and you know it's 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 been it's been a jewel that i hold on to and i've held on to all my life my home is here where i stay and because i because i am not bound to i mean i love my home i love it <laughs> but because i'm not 
because I'm not going to think of that as somehow, you know, an extension. I mean, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a thick, gross reality there that's, I, this is my home. That I actually can be at home anywhere. Wherever I am is home for that moment. Yeah, and, and, uh, and maybe this is the way I have to live. And maybe this is the meaning of these, of uh, these bandishes. And maybe it's, the, you know, uh, in that lovely book, uh, The Name of the Rose, one of the nice things is the way in which, you know, there's a sense in which the books in the library speak to each other. Usi tarah se na bandish hai bhi aapas na baat kerti hai. The bandish is, bandish doesn't exist alone. It doesn't exist alone. You know, the bandish is heard within the entire universe of all the bandishes that you know and you don't know and you will never know. Wow. Yeah, and you, your sense is made from that inter, I think they call it intertextuality. Yes. So for me, uh, if, if, I, if, I have, if I'm able to answer your question, then uh, yes, we did not, or no, we did not talk specifically about cities. She talked about the cities in which she, she, city in which she grew up. She grew up in Calcutta. She was the granddaughter of Keshav Chandra Sen, very different kind of life. She was married when she was 17 to the one of the princes of the Kapurthala Rajwada. Very different life, very different space. Yes, but but um, you see, uh, you are a student, I, I'm assuming. So, And I'm sure you know this, but let me share this with you because I had to come to this understanding. That, okay, uh, when we learn something, when we are studying, and we are studying all our lives, then everything does not come to us fully formed as a lesson. You know, there are fragments that we hear. You know, I, I hear something, something that the you know when I went to buy phal, I I ask him and he says something, and it sets a train of thought. I have to think what what is it, what does it mean in the context of his life, my life, the life of the world in which we live. Everything is telling you something. Yes? So if Nainaji was talking only about her life as a young girl in Calcutta, if she was talking about her life as a young bride in Kapurthala, and then as a, as a widowed woman you know, trying to find her way in Delhi, she's not speaking directly about cities, but she's also but they are the cities of her life. So there is an interweaving there of her life, her learning, her creation of her life, and the, and the ongoing story of that city. You know, the history of that city, the ongoing story of it. Yeah? So, uh, uh, so to me, I, I would say that maybe one should not you know, even if somebody doesn't say anything directly, or when you go to a musician to learn, they will never answer a question directly. They will always tell you a story. And you have to go back home and find out what the meaning of that was. Why did they tell me that story? And your meaning will not be their meaning. Why they told you that story will not be how, why you will understand why they told you that story. But that's the wonder of life. And that's the wonder of being at that moment who you are and not who she is. And then that's also the wonder of that we can dissolve those boundaries and be vast. Vidyaji, I think uh, there are many more questions. And it looks like from what you just said, that a musician will tell you a story rather than give you an answer. Maybe could we have another session with you uh, where we can just sit down together and talk about things, some of these Thank questions. You. Also Thank a you. little bit if you could sing. Oh, um, uh, Professor Chaya, I am now really, I find it difficult now to sing unless I have Tanpura and I'm sitting down and I need a little warm-up time. I can't. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would sadly do, you know, I have never, I have never been uh, a fussy about that, but I find it difficult now. Yeah. No, but this, this, uh, there are, there are questions about what you see when you are singing in reverse, you know. Uh -huh. Uh, yes, <laughs> I, you know, you see, of course you see, but you don't see with eyes. <laughs> yes, so what we'll do is, we'll send you these questions. 
Okay. Then we will organize another session. What do you say, Sudipta? So is that a good idea? Huh? I think we will do that because okay. all our uh, participants, we are fascinated by how you are explaining or how you are telling the story to, to bring uh, a world rather than answer a question at one, in some sharp pointed manner. It's a wonderful way. And we would like to expand our boundaries, as you are saying. So we will do that. Huh? Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm really honored and I'm so grateful to you for your listening, actually. You know, I mean, you know, look, it was can't happen. If someone doesn't listen, then we can't do it. You know? No, no. How much you listen, you listen to yourself. And we heard the voice, which is modulating in a way in which something further is coming out. And I think this is what we would like to enjoy a little more. We would do that. We'll do that. We'll, uh, we'll talk and decide when we can do that. Okay. And we'll send, you some, we'll send you some questions also. Okay. I do and, read if it's after 10 days. Okay. No problem. Mm -hmm. No problem. Huh. Any Mr. Mr. Any? Wants, to say, wants to ask something. Yes. Can yes, I? Professor. Yeah, no, I, okay. I had no question, but I was just trying to listen to her very patiently. And, uh, you know, what is the purpose of this particular kind of conversations is to really broaden the understanding and not just talk about build or just architecture mm. in a myopic sense, you know. And I think as you were mentioning, Professor Chaya, from whatever she spoke, I think if we could really think and digest what she was talking about, it is nothing which leaves the environment away. Yes. So I think we have to perceive and make an effort as students of architecture to understand the stories. Mm. And from these stories, try to imagine the kind of environment through which the story is told. Yes. And this is the most important part of you know, her presentation today to me. And I think at the beginning, this is very important for the group because you know, we have to really think of architecture as something which is all pervading and it's culture and life all put together. And I think if we can try to understand architecture from this other angle, I think that is something, you know, which can really help us, you know, broadening, you know, our horizons. Yes. Because ultimately architecture is something which is everything put together. Mm. And to try and understand the, the richness of architecture by these kind of stories. For example, when she was talking about Meroli, I think I was walking through Meroli in my own imagination. Because it, I, I think the whole Meroli, you know, the Baudi, the Greens, the archaeological park, everything somehow got alive to me. You know, so I think this is, this is the most important lesson to begin with, that I think it is through the culture and the life that we have to really understand architecture. Yes. And I think we must, as Khan used to always say, that we must develop an ability to talk to buildings. And buildings must talk to us. So this is something, you know, which is a wonderful presentation in that sense. And I think if we can digest this, it will open up a completely different world for us to look at architecture. So I just wanted to add this to this. And I must thank, uh, uh, you know, Vidyaji for this uh, very enlightening kind of, you know, experience of her life, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the way she has lived, I think it is... And this is something, you know, which we, we, must un we must learn from musicians. Because musicians, you know, when they really, when they pursue their art, I think they are really part of the life. You know, we tend to somehow carve our own, you know, little uh, niches and sit within that, you know. But I think music 
is the area, you know, which I always say that it is, it is something, you know, which is absolutely a lesson for us yeah. and musicians. So I just wanted to say this. Thank you. And thank so you, Vidyadi. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Hmm. So, Sudipto, I suggest that we uh, collect the questions and, as Professor Sauda suggested, dwell over this a little bit. And then we have another session with Vidyaji. Not that she is coming with a talk, but where we are conversing with her. Yeah? Even today, it was like conversation, but it will be even more flowing the next time we meet. And thank you very much, Vidyaji. Thank you. It was thank a wonderful, you. wonderful time with you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. And it's it's thank a you. superb beginning, superb beginning to our our oh. studio. But thank you so much, and thank you uh, all of you. But thank you especially, Oves, for you know I'm very clucky. I'm very hopeless with all this. Zoom and email and things like that. I'm learning now thanks to the you know pandemic and lockdown, but he helped me a lot. So thank you so much. Thank you. No, it's a my pleasure. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye, thank you. Bye. Uh,